man. I subbed you because I enjoyed your language videos. It was very informative and entertaining. They were, to be fair. Now you're just some Bitcoin psycho like the rest of these self-proclaimed tech gurus. Disappointing. It was very interesting when you made your language videos. Thank you. It was much more interesting than Bitcoin. You're getting Bitcoin addicted. It's something like drug addiction. Get well, mate. Why does crypto completely take over some people's lives instead of just being one of their interests? I replied, I said, this video is about Bitcoin, not crypto. When you understand Bitcoin, you realize that it affects every aspect of life. It's very important. It affects every, that's a bold claim, right? When you understand Bitcoin, you realize that it affects every aspect of life, big and small. That's a bold claim. Still, why can't Bitcoin just be one of your interests instead of totally consuming your life? Good question. You used to upload about blah, 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 loads of topics. Um, he's seen it happening with other YouTubers. What is this thing? Is it, Are we all being possessed? Uh, maybe. Uh, otherwise, I welcome you to explain the effect of Bitcoin on every aspect of life, as you said. Maybe in a dedicated video. Well, Baksan, this video is for you. I'm going to take this text here. I welcome you to explain the effect of Bitcoin on every aspect of life, as you said, maybe in a dedicated video. Now, this is a really, really um, good question. It's a really interesting question for me to answer because it got me thinking. And that's a, like I said, it's a bold claim. The effect of Bitcoin on every aspect of life. Why would Bitcoin affect your everyday life? Why is it a big deal? Like, why is it like, give me any one thing that affects your everyday life to the extent that Bitcoin does at least that is my claim so i've made this claim you realize it affects every aspect of life and i have to can now justify it so that's what i'm going to try and do in this video if you're new to the channel welcome i make videos all about uh bitcoin not cryptocurrencies but specifically bitcoin because i think that that's kind of the only one that's really worth um my time at this stage so uh, i make videos about bitcoin i go into the streets i interview people i talk to people on the streets about bitcoin and i give away bitcoin on the streets because i'm fascinated it like as people have pointed out i um i i'm a bitcoin psycho i am obsessed with bitcoin i'm interested in it and there's nothing really more uh, in, uh important or interesting that i would rather be talking about in this day on in july 2022 uh, than bitcoin so with that said, how am I going to approach this question? Well, I'd like to start off with the premise of Bitcoin is money. So we, if we replace his, uh, his question, I welcome you to explain the effect of Bitcoin on every as aspect of your life. Well, if you replace the word Bitcoin with money, it, w would it be a, a fair claim to say money somewhat directly or indirectly affects every aspect of your life? Let's think about this. If you're a hardworking young person and you have a job, you've done all the right things, you've gone to school, you've graduated, and you've, you're have you working hard, you're earning money, you're doing that to earn money. Why are you earning money? Well, everyone earns money for different reasons. Some people just want it to live, some people want to take a nice holiday, some people um, need it for food, some people don't need to work, but they work for um, pleasure, they do something they enjoy, they do it to give their life meaning. Um, the majority of us work because we have to pay the bills. We have to pay for our family. We have to put food on the table. I've got a young daughter. I've got another child on the way. Don't know whether it's a boy or a girl yet. And I work because I need to work to live. I don't own this house. I rent it. I'd like to own a house someday. We'll come back to that a bit later. But money really does affect everyone's life, at least 99% of us. If you're fortunate enough to, to never have to work or never have to think about work or think about money, then you're in the extreme minority and you're probably, you, you, then you don't need to watch this video and you can forget about Bitcoin. Although I hope that whatever assets you do own don't um, you know get hyperinflated away. So for everyone who needs to think about money, this video is for you. Back to back Sam's question. I welcome you to explain the effect of Bitcoin on every aspect of your life. Well, money is a way of um, uh, allowing us to express our uh, our views in the marketplace. So I might value something. I will buy that thing that I value and I will be happy to pay for it because I value it. Everyone has a different perspective on what they value and don't value. So money is really this way of like communicating between six billion 7 billion, whatever it is now, 8 billion maybe, people on the planet, they all communicate through the medium of money. And what 
they believe has value, what should have value, what shouldn't have value. So I might value a baby's crib higher than somebody who's, whose children are all grown up or who hasn't got kids, for example, more than some, uh, more than them. So like if you, and I've got two guitars sat here, I like, I like music. If I might value a guitar more than somebody who just has no interest. I valued this book. I bought this book. I bought this book. I bought these books. They're about, you know, um, technology and, and finance and, and, uh, this one's about Bitcoin and this one's about Bitcoin. And I bought those because I'm interested in them. The point here is that money kind of is a way of expressing our value. And when the money is broken, which we'll come back to, then everything is broken. The money is broken. That's a claim as well. Is the money broken? Well, let's take a look at this chart of the purchasing power of US dollar. We know that if we hold currencies like pounds, dollars, euros, yen, they, their purchasing power decreases over time. A dollar 100 years ago has lost about 90, 99% of its uh, purchasing power today. And it's the same for all the other currencies. The dollar has been the best currency. And if you'd had uh, held other uh, currencies, you would have seen your purchasing power decrease, decrease, decrease. Why is that? Well, it's a good question because actually Jeff Booth in this book here, and I'm going to do maybe a book review on each of these at some point in the future if you'd like to see it. But Jeff Booth describes deflation and how technology should be making things cheaper. If you look at the price of computers and mobile phones and things like that, actually the trend is cheaper because as humans, we innovate, we create new ways of doing things and that allows us to essentially uh, get more for less. And that's what the human species has done for millennia. We've got more for less. We've, we've, we've used technology to improve our lives, to make our lives better, to make us have to work less. If you think, you know, like Stone Age men, Stone Age, Stone Age uh, people come together as hundreds, th hundreds of thousands of years ago, like you think they wanted to work? No, they wanted to make their lives as easy as possible. They wanted to live near a river. So they've got river uh, water supply. They didn't go and settle 10 miles away from a, uh, in a water supply and just walk each day. Why would you do that? Why would you make your life harder than you have to? So as humans, we, we are constantly trying to get more for less. And that's that's why things naturally should become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Why don't they become cheaper? Well, the money is inflated. The money is being increased in supply. We look at this chart of the uh, money supply from the Federal Reserve, and it's gone up and up and up and up and up. And just in the last couple of years, from January 2020 up to May 2022, it's gone up 50, 40 or 50 percent from like 14, 15 trillion to about 22 trillion dollars globally. So when the money supply is increasing, it's being debased. Actually, it makes your money worth less. Like if I just magically doubled all the pounds and dollars in existence right now, your money would be worth less. Right. And that's exactly what we've seen. That's why we've got massive inflation now, 9, 10, 11 percent even across developed markets, the money is broken. We're coming to the end of this 50 year experiment of fiat money backed by nothing. Money used to be backed by gold. Some people think it still is. It's definitely not. It's backed by nothing. It's, the supply of the US dollars in circulation is infinite, uh, said by the Federal Reserve themselves. There is no limit to the amount of money they can produce or create. Now, that doesn't mean that central bankers are bad people. They're just humans and they're fallible, just like all humans are. They're not perfect. They give in to political pressure to print more money when you've got people demanding, we want more money, we want more money. And there's a government and a central bank who can print it. Guess what? To win the next, next election, they're going to print money. Print money, give it to people, give it to people. It keeps them happy for a while, but it doesn't solve the underlying problem, which is the money is broken. Now, Bitcoin was an incredible revolution in this sense. In 2008, when Stoshi Nakamoto wrote the white paper, what he'd essentially discovered was like a once in a species event where he'd found a way, he'd combined all aspects of economics, politics, game theory, monetary history, network theory, finance, cryptography, information theory, censorship law, regulation, human organization, psychology, all of these things all went into Bitcoin. What, what people see when they hear Bitcoin is they just think of one thing. Actually, it's an incredibly complex and very all-encompassing uh, technology, which, you know, to be alive at this point is kind of a big deal to be able to witness this transformation of fiat money backed by nothing held by central banks, centralized uh, control versus decentralized kind of free market money that Bitcoin offers, which allows 
your money to hold its purchasing power of value and not become debased and debased and debased. But I really want to answer this question from Baxam. I welcome you to explain the effect of Bitcoin on every aspect of life. I want to go back to money. Um, money is time and you can do things which don't cost money. I am not a person who likes flashy things. I drive a car which is 11 years old. I rent a house which is modest. If anything, it's a bit on the small side, especially with uh, one soon to be two children. I don't like flashy things. I don't dress in designer clothes. I don't have designer watches, etc. What's the point here? The point is, is that uh, is that your 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 time and your money are intrinsically linked. If your money is being destroyed to the point where your money is losing so much purchasing power that you just have to keep working harder and harder and harder and harder just to keep up, which I think a lot of people is what like they're feeling. That's at the basis of all this social discontent and we've seen rioting we've seen people not happy about just feeling like somehow life isn't fair but they can't quite put their finger on what it is my diagnosis for these things is that the money is broken i bring up a a, a picture of tom harwood here who's like a he's just a journalist you know he's he's not a particularly notable person but he he had this tweet which went somewhat viral and he says, there is no solution to the housing crisis other than building more houses. Everything else is window dressing. Totally mis misguided. I mean, this guy doesn't know what Bitcoin is. He has no idea that the money is broken. He's, he's, he's misattributing a problem with a increase in house prices, which, by the way, I'll also just run this video while we're here. And you can see how house prices have accelerated so much greater uh, at a greater rate than wages have. This gap between the amount of uh, the cost of a house and the amount you're earning has just been widening and widening and widening and widening, making that purchase out of reach. If you're a young, hardworking person who aspires to own their own home, I don't think that's anything that is you know too much to ask, really. I think most people want to own their own home. It gives them that sense of security. They feel like they own a piece of, you know, a stake in society. They own a, an asset, whether, you know, whether it's the best asset or not. And that's that's to be discussed. But people want to own their own home. Now, the population of the UK isn't rising. Po population in developed countries is actually on the decline. People aren't having children these days. If you do have kids, you might have one, maybe two. But a lot of people just aren't having kids. So we're in a population decline. So... He's totally misdiagnosed it. I truly believe that if uh, if you're watching, um, Tom, he would he would figure out that actually the money is broken. When the money supply increases by forty percent in a couple of years, everything's going to increase in value a lot. Why did the money why did the, why did the money supply increase? They printed money, political pressure, worry about a deflationary collapse. Everything is based on debt. That's kind of a whole different question. But bringing it back to Baksam's question, I welcome you to explain the effect of Bitcoin on every aspect of life. Now I'll finish with this point. If you are someone who wants to plan for the future and your money is decaying, it's decomposing, it's gradually becoming worth uh, a value closer and closer to the plastic or the paper in which it's printed on, which, by the way, does happen in a lot of countries. You might live in a developed country. You might have a strong currency. Good for you. Great. Well, what's your inflation rate? Only 9%? Kind of sucks, right? In the long term, everything gets cheaper in Bitcoin. In the long term, you can plan with Bitcoin because Bitcoin supply is fixed. It's got the most predictable monetary policy in the world. Uh, every four years, the amount of bitcoins that's are that are released onto the network is cut in half. It's becoming, it's it's trending towards a uh, an asset of absolute scarcity. Nobody can create more bitcoin. And one of the chapters in Gigi's book here, which I really loved, I was reading it last night, is called The Scarcity of Scarcity, page 19. And what he says here is, is that actually with technology increasing, which kind of links back to this book by Jeff Booth, when you've got technology creating an abundant future where humans are using their, their skills, their expertise, their knowledge, their immense intelligence to create an abundance using technology, Actually, there are fewer and fewer, fewer things which become scarce. Gold is technically scarce because, you know, there's only so much gold. You can only fill three or four or five Olympic swimming pools with all the gold in the world. Okay, it's scarce. People value it because it's scarce. But actually, the scarcity of scarcity, there aren't actually many things anymore in the world which are scarce. Diamonds aren't that scarce. There's, it's just, there's the whole kind of cartel in, in South Africa, or is it parts of Africa, which basically limit the amount of diamonds that can be mined just to keep the price up. So like, it's all a bit fake, it's all smoke and mirrors. Bitcoin is the only, you know, you can argue that Bitcoin really 
is the most scarce thing in the universe because it's the only thing which will be entirely totally scarce there will only be 21 million bitcoin and i'm reading now bitcoin and advanced technology in itself breaks this trend and creates a new commodity which is truly scarce some even argue that it is one of the scarcest things in the universe the supply can't be inflated no matter how much effort one chooses to expend towards creating more only two things are genuinely scarce time and bitcoin that's what safety in the moose says now, if you can convert your time into something which is as equally scarce as time, which is Bitcoin, then that allows you to actually be able to plan for the future. And it means that your future time and your future purchasing power and your future kind of economic energy, monetary energy, if you like, can't be stolen from you. And that's a really, really, really powerful concept. Um, Back Sam, thank you for your comment. I'm probably going to leave it there. I think I've covered everything I want to cover. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, share it with somebody, or just check out my street interviews. I really enjoy going and talking to people on the streets. And if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments. I'm on uh, Instagram and Twitter at MikeStillBTC. And with that said, I hope I've answered your question, why Bitcoin can make you a psycho. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.